Everybody, welcome into the DMVR Nuggets podcast, a very, very special edition of the DMVR Nuggets podcast. I'm Adam Adas flying solo today because we have a special je- special guest, former Denver Nugget, current star of Partizan Belgrade and fan favorite, PJ Dozier, a.k.a. PJ Composure. PJ, what's going on, brother? <laughs> Nothing much, man. Just glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So if I got to ask you the first one up front. We, we here at DNVR and amongst the fans, we nicknamed you PJ Composure because your first game in Denver, I don't know if you remember it, your first game in Denver was against Charlotte and you had mm-hmm. like 12 points or something, like very calm and collected. Then you had a little, I don't think you were at the podium. I think you were in the locker room and just everybody's like, oh my gosh, new guy, first game with the Nuggets. You look like a 10-year veteran even in the post game. So you got the nickname PJ Composure. <laughs> Definitely. I I remember uh, tuning in and and listening to you guys say that, man. So it's an honor to have that nickname. Uh, You know, it's definitely something that uh, describes my game. So so I like it. I I love that, man. So we're going to talk. Not only did you play some very interesting years with the Nuggets, you know, in the 2020s, just a couple years back. Now you're in Belgrade, and obviously a huge part of our audience is partisan fans or partisan haters. It's like a little bit split, half and half. <laughs> so we got a lot to talk about. But I first, I just want to start with an overarching one and just ask you about your time in Denver. Like, what did it mean to you? And, and what do you think when you think back on those three years? Uh, definitely. You know, I, I tell everybody uh, to this day that, you know, Denver definitely holds special part of my heart um you know it's definitely uh something that kind of projected my career um you know being able to be there and play alongside of those guys uh with the great coaching staff and front office that we had there um you know so i think it definitely uh is is something that i hold dear to me um the fans you know open uh brought me in with open arms and uh you know i had an amazing time there and um you know it's definitely something that that i hold special did you when you you know, get picked up by Denver because you had a couple stops before that. What were you thinking? What was going through your mind when when Denver made the call? Um, you know, I just take it one day at a time. Uh, you know, I was excited to get the call uh, to even be able to continue to be in the NBA um, was a blessing. You know, so that's all I was thinking about um, and just trying to make the most of my opportunity there. Uh, you know, in any way possible. Was there any message to you? Like, did Tim Conley, when he reached out, did he tell you anything about – because you show up and you play almost immediately, and then I know those first couple games you're in double figures, like, multiple times. Was there a message to you about what they were – how they were wanting you to approach that that opportunity? Uh, yeah, you know, I, um, I had a guy that was there, Tory Craig, um, you know, who I was very familiar Carolina, with yeah. uh, prior to – prior to me being uh, in Denver. So, you know, I kind of saw his path and kind of, you know, how he went through the, through the uh, process of of being the two way and and getting converted and things like that. So um, it was definitely something that I knew that I would have an opportunity. Uh, I would get a real opportunity to play and I was excited. The opportunity ended up being, um, you know, the bubble that year. One of the games I always think about was you're down three, one to Utah. You were one of the big adjustments in game five. One of the big adjustments was, PJ, you played, I think, 20 minutes. We're like a plus 21. What do you remember about that specific game that didn't just turn around that series? It kind of turned around the whole arc of the Nuggets, in my opinion. Oh, uh, yeah, man. I appreciate the compliment. But, you know, I was just, like I said, I was just taking it one game at a time, uh, doing whatever I needed to do to help my team get a win. Uh, and I was really going out there and, you know, changing the pace of the game, uh, getting stops, uh, guarding, you know, some of the best players out there. And, you know, of course, my teammates took care of the rest. (laughs) So, um, you know, I was just excited to have that opportunity to play on that type of stage. Uh, And, of course, with those group of guys. 
Do you? It sounds like you don't quite think of that game the way I do. I almost think of game five as the P.J. Dozier game. I mean, Murray had 50 points, so it's also the Murray game. But That's <laughs> what I remember. <laughs> that was a big part of it for sure. But I, I just remember that game. To me, that was like a really big moment and a really big game for you personally. The stat line was not like something crazy, but, you know, from not playing yeah. to playing 20 minutes and the whole game went different. Definitely, definitely. You know, it's all about having the intangibles to, you know, do whatever your team needs to, to ultimately get the win. And I know, you know, me as a player, uh, I know the stat line doesn't always reflect uh, the type of yeah. impact a player can have on a game. And, you know, I was just happy to, to be that player that affected the game uh, in a positive way for my team. And like you said, you know, Jamal having that type of game, man, I was just happy to be out there watching the one-on-one -on -one show <laughs> as I sat in the corner and just watch him go to work. Uh, so, you know, it's definitely something that I'll remember for the rest of my life. Do you, how important was that bubble run in your opinion for the Nuggets? Cause at that time, from my perspective, I knew Murray was good. I didn't know he was that good. You know, the right. Nuggets being the team being down three, one, how does Jokic play? What happens? You know, I didn't know how everybody respond. How important do you think that series and that bubble experience was to getting the team to where they were this last year? I think it was very important. You know, I think the guys that, that really needed to step up did so uh, in situations that we needed them to, to step up. And I think everyone kind of had their opportunity to show, you know, how much value they brought to our team. Uh, and it wasn't just one person every single game. Uh, like you said, we had multiple guys that, stepped up and, and, you know, had a huge impact on one game or one series uh, that ultimate, ultimately uh, led to our, our run that we had in the bubble. And I think me personally, I didn't really reflect too much on it until after we got out the bubble and, you mm. know, kind of got home to decompress and, and realize, like, how far we really went and, uh, you know, kind of how much that meant to, to the team and, and to the organization. And to the city and the fan base, for sure. I mean, especially that year, right. which was like almost everybody's least favorite year they've ever had. Um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the next year, here's another one I wonder if you think about often. So the next year, Murray goes down with the injury. He's having a great year. He goes down with the injury. Aaron Gordon trade just happened. The team goes nine and two right after that with you playing a lot mm -hmm. of minutes. Like everybody thinks the season's over. Murray goes down nine and two. And everything's looking really good, but then you get hurt. You have the hip injury, and it takes you out the rest of the year. Do you? How often do you think back to that stretch, and what do you remember about that stretch where the team was actually rolling in the regular season? Definitely. I think that's something that's kind of overlooked, um, you know, that whole situation of guys, you know, kind of going down one after another. Um, and the, 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 uh, the run that we was kind of, you know, starting to, to, to make, at the time, of course, you know, seeing our, our star point guard go down was, was devastating for us. But, you know, we knew that it was a next man up mentality. And, uh, you know, nobody wanted to be Jamal Murray. You know, he was the, he was the, he was the guy. He's, he's the one and only Jamal Murray. So everybody else just kind of, you know, wanted to fill in their role uh, as best as possible. And I think, you know, as a team, we was doing that collectively. And then, like you said, uh, you know, me having the injury that I had um, was very uh, devastating for, for me because I, you know, like, I, like you said, I had a very special opportunity uh, to kind of step into a role that, that I never really had at the professional level just yet. Um, but yeah, man, that's, that's definitely a, a time that I think is, is not really talked about too much, um, but uh, it's something that I, I remember. Uh, you know, a lot. <laughs> what, what about in that playoff? So they get Austin Rivers, you know, kind of when you go down, they bring in Austin Rivers to to kind of bolster up the, the backcourt. And, you know, he had a great playoff. So he had the Austin Rivers game. Our bar was going crazy, yeah. chanting his name. Is there any part of you watching that going, man, that was me. <laughs> that was my spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. You know, I think, you know, me as a player, uh, you know, I'm a competitive guy. And, you know, I, I think that I'm always able to, you know, be that guy to, to help my team uh, win. And, you know, when I'm not being able to have the opportunity to be out there and, and go to war with my guys, uh, you know, it's definitely something that, you know, I, I, I uh, you know, it's hard to get off your, your heart, hard to get off your mind. And like I said, you always want to be that guy. But watching Austin come in uh, and doing what he did, man, and, and his story behind even before getting that call, you know, he was at home. He was right, he right. was at home, man, and and uh, you know to to see the impact that he had on 
on the games and, and the rest of the season uh, for a new ball team. Um, you know, it, it was it was a uh, it was special. It was something special for him. Uh, and I'm glad that he had that opportunity to do so. What about this last year? I mean, the Nuggets get go on to win a title. You kind of were with them in all these formative years. What was that experience like for you personally? Uh, I mean, just being able to watch my brothers uh, you know, there com- complete the task that we had when I was there um, was surreal. And, you know, I had absolutely no hate, no, no anything. It was just I almost kind of felt like a fan at the moment, to be honest with you. Right. You know, I wasn't right. really playing or anything like that anywhere. So, you know, being able to kind of root for that team uh, was was something that I haven't really done, especially as a professional. Uh, you know, I have I've always had individual players that I like to, to watch and uh, root for. But to actually be able to root for a certain team that, you know, I've had history with and grew relationships with and watch them be as successful as they were. Um, and, I, and I know how much that meant for them. And like you said, the fans and, and the city of Denver. I know this is a bit of a weird one because, you know, it's, it's, it's almost a gray area. But did you take any personal pride in it? I mean, you were part of the journey, even though you didn't get to be a part of the team, you know, at the last. But is there any part of you that was like, hey, I was here for Jokic's first MVP and the climb and all the stuff that got there? Not really. I mean, I, I think a lot of my friends and family kind of, you know, uh, put put that in my mind and, you know, tried to speak positively about that. But at the end of the day, like I said, I was just happy for those guys and what they accomplished uh, themselves. And we all know that it was a process, uh, you know, leading up to it. And there's a yeah. lot of things that kind of went into the work and went into, you know, uh, them winning that championship, you know, previous guys and the things that they sacrificed uh, in their careers and things like that. But at the end of the day, you know, they did it. That team won, um, and, and those guys were, were able to succeed. Did you talk to anybody throughout the, the run or, or after the run or anything? Um, who did you stay in, in contact with? Uh, Jamal and Yoke, for the most part. Um, you know, I think I tried to give them, you know, their space, of course, while they was, you know, in the yeah. fire and, and wait until, you know, after they did win and, and kind of let that die down a little bit. But, you know, I – I don't think that they understand how happy I was to watch them, <laughs> you know, uh, pull pull it out, man. And, and really, uh, like I said, I just know how much it meant uh, to those guys and the journey that they've had together. Um, you know, those especially those two being able to, to be there uh, from the very beginning and, and see it through. It, it's definitely uh, surreal. What, what do you think makes Jokic special as a player? Why, why is he so good and why is he so impactful? Because <laughs> he moves so slow. <laughs> nah, he uh that's the key it's just an iq right man i mean I, I think he's very deceptive uh but it's it's his knowledge of the game uh you know he sees plays uh you know two and three and four plays before it even happens uh he knows where guys need to be at um you know, offensively and defensively uh you know i think being able to play alongside of him is and that's something that i've you know took away from him and and kind of instilled in my game i've always Felt like I was a player with a very high IQ of the game, uh, kind of being able to, you know, play multiple positions and know, you know, things that are possibly going to happen before it happens. But, you know, once I, I got, you know, on the team with him and I kind of saw how he saw the game, um, it was a, a, in a totally different light, totally different perspective. And it's uh, something that I, you know, carry with, with me today. Did you enjoy that sort of like learning new parts of the game of basketball? from from Jokic absolutely absolutely and I think you know even being over here uh playing in Europe now I kind of see you know uh where that came from um Mm -hmm. you know the Europeans are definitely uh very knowledgeable of the game very fundamentally sound um you know and then of course you add skill on top of that and you know the athleticism is just a bonus at that point um but I think uh you know definitely be able to to see uh, how he sees the game and then kind of come over here and see you know kind of where you all started from uh it, it makes sense it makes sense now <laughs> i want i can't i want to ask you about that but i have one more nuggets question which is just did you see drunk michael malone at the parade and and like did that surprise <laughs> you at all like this was i knew you know i know michael malone could get a little wild this or that but the parade man yeah. he really let loose did that surprise you uh, Hey man, it didn't surprise me at all. But I was I was happy as hell to see it. 
I was happy, man. I was happy to see him like that. You know, he didn't make a fool of himself. You know, he kept he kept it composed, and, and and he was able he was able to you know kind of talk his talk, but you know at the same time uh, keep it keep it somewhat professional, man. But he he deserves it. Uh, you know, I was happy for him. That's that's also somebody who I made sure I kept in contact with before and after. Uh, you know, it was all said and done, and you know he plays a big part of of my career, and uh, you know he believed in me when nobody else didn't as well. So. You know, I'm just really happy for him. So I want to ask you a couple questions now about being out in, in Belgrade and playing for Partizan. But first, I got to tell you, so we went out to Serbia, DNVR Nuggets. We went out there. We did a whole documentary. We got to know some people. We learned the culture and the basketball history. And I fell in love with Jelko Obradovic from research, you mm -hmm. know, just for, from looking it up. And I talked to some people from the Nuggets organization who played for him or worked alongside him, and they – I'm just so intrigued by him. What have been your early impressions of him, your new head coach at Partizan, and, and what can you tell me about him? He's amazing, man. Uh, before even getting out here, when everyone heard uh, who is familiar with European basketball, um, when everyone heard where I was going, you know, everyone just told me that that's the best spot that I could be in, um, even in terms of, of, you know, besides the fans, besides the – the city being such a great city, but, you know, being able to play for uh, arguably the best European coach um, of all time is, yep. is, is definitely a blessing. And um, so I heard a lot about him before I even got over here, man. And he's, he's definitely lived up to, to everyone's <laughs> standards, um, you know, being able to, to see it firsthand and um, understand that, that he is a different, different type coach and he knows the game like, like no, no one else does. So. What about Jokic? Did he reach out and tell you anything about Partizan or Belgrade or Serbia? Or what, what, what advice did he have for you? Yeah, man. Uh, when I told him I was coming over here, uh, he called me. He called me immediately. and um, He was excited, man. He was, he was so excited for me to, to be able to have this opportunity to come out here and continue my career. And, uh, you know, definitely told me that, that they would welcome me with open arms, uh, you know, arguably the best fans in the world when it comes to basketball, not just in, you know, in Euro <laughs> basketball or, or in the States, but in the world. And they're also living up to that hype, man. But, um, you know, he was he was super excited and he, he made me excited, even more excited to come out here and, uh, you know, start this season off. Man, so we saw the video. I don't we, we played it earlier, but there's fires in the stands. First of all, the game's outside. <laughs> There's fires yeah. all around, like these flares. People are jumping and screaming. It's insane. And then I find out it's an exhibition game. It's not even a real game. It's just a preseason game. I mean, what did Man. you – I know you were prepared for that or whatever people told you, but what was it like when you played in front of that atmosphere? I don't think I was prepared for it, to be honest <laughs> with you. I mean, my teammates, my coaches, everyone, you know, continued to tell me uh, that the fans are the best fans, the craziest fans, man, but – to to experience it firsthand, um, I don't think anybody's words can can really put in the action of what what that really looks like, what it sounds like, and what it feels like, man. And it's it's an amazing experience. I'm blessed to have this opportunity to be out here, um, man. I I caught myself paying attention to the fans more so than the game <laughs> half of the time. To be very honest with you, the, yeah. they start lighting up the, the stadium, man. I, at first, I kind of got spooked. I almost ran straight to the locker room. No, I, I didn't know what was going on. You know, we don't have nothing like that uh, back in the States. So I was I was a little confused as to what was going on. But um, it was an amazing experience. And uh, I think I, I might have my my poster board picture, man, one of the best uh, action action photos I've ever had uh, taken by taken uh, for me in, in the game. So um, it was a crazy experience. And I, I'm blessed to be here. You're talking about like perfectly mid air, mid dunk, and then Man. there's like fire everywhere, smoke and fire. Man. It almost looked it almost looked like it was like a filter or some kind of green <laughs> yeah. background. Like it was it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Yeah. It is it is crazy. And if that's an exhibition game, it makes you think like you know, have people tried to prepare you for the derby, right? Red Star Partisan, yeah. two rivals, one oh, city. Yeah. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. that, but imagine if that was a preseason game, what's the rivalry game like? Exactly. Exactly. I'm so excited to find out, man. I can't wait. It's, it's, each day is getting better and better. Um, better. So, you know, I'm, and I'm ready for it. 
Uh, awesome. Have you gotten to explore Belgrade or Serbia or anything yet? Or how long have you been out there? And, and how familiar have you gotten with the city so far? Uh, I haven't really done too much exploring just yet. Uh, as soon as I got, got out here, we kind of shot straight to training camp um, in the mountains. And we was there for about a week or so. Uh, okay. Came back for a day or so. And then we went to a little preseason tournament. So I haven't really got, you know, too established yet uh, into the city. But, you know, I've heard nothing but great things. I've, I've been able to go eat a couple times. Um, great scenery. Uh, great restaurants and for me that's that's what i'm yeah. that's what i'm all about as long as i got good food i'm good <laughs> you're gonna have to get up and have the fish stew Yo yogic's favorite meal fish stew he's gonna have to make some for you or something here before too long yeah I no for real for <laughs> real so all right before we get you out of here um we're i'm gonna bring on miroslav miroslav is a big uh, nuggets fan he's our serbian correspondent he's also a big partisan fan and he's going to – I thought it would be nice to have a Serbian welcome you to the city and maybe give you one or two pieces of advice here. So is Miroslav there, Tiff? Let's bring Miroslav on. Oh, there he is. Miroslav, welcome. Hi, PJ. What's going on? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, well, first of all, welcome to the Partizan family. And I just wanted to give you some bullet points about the team. So Partizan set the EuroLeague record last season with 17,000 – 700 average attendance in the Stark Arena, and those are some yeah. NBA level numbers. Red Star is a great team with equally crazy fans, but lo don't let them fool you. You chose the biggest team in these parts a EuroLeague champion that played in three more EuroLeague Final Fours and just barely missed on another Final Four last season. Last year, sure. Dante Exum had an amazing season for Partizan, and I can see you having an equally great season if not better most partisan fans still don't know enough about your game but i'll make sure they get enough data before the start of the euro uh, oh. pj pj real quick that rivalry red star mm -hmm. and partisan it, it's like celtics lakers if if they were from north mm -hmm. and south korea or something you know like it's, it's <laughs> all right yeah no intense. really no but most importantly if you like roasted yeah. pork, what i've been there since i got here is, is that rivalry i love it oh yeah so if you like roasted pork, go to Mladenovac to do MB Pechanera or order it straight from Čačak. It's only an hour and 15 drives nowadays. Mirsa, uh, I'm going to be honest so with you, and I know PJ <laughs> feels the same way. Whenever you say Serbian names, I just don't hear anything. You, you might as well just be <laughs> coughing or mumbling. <laughs> you just gave a restaurant that there's no way I or PJ will ever remember. But keep going on. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, that, that, that's all I have. I just want to welcome you to the family and and know you you'll have some crazy people on your side from from now and forever. Most definitely, man. I appreciate it. P PJ, thanks so much for spending time. All the Nuggets Nation loves you, man. I think you're universally loved. We hope to see you around these parts again. And and I mean this sincerely. I probably won't be catching all the partisan games, but I'm certainly going to be following along, and I and I wish you so wish you a lot of luck. Most definitely, man. I appreciate y'all for having me, man. Keep doing your thing. All righty, PJ. Good luck out there. Thank you, Tiff. You can go appreciate ahead, and it. bring him off. All right, let's take a break. On the other side, me and Miroslav are going to have some fun talking about your new favorite partisan player, PJ Composure. Uh, we'll talk about that on the other side. First, I got to tell you guys about Fubo TV. Fubo TV is your TV provider if you love sports. You love sports, 140 plus live channels of sports shows, movies, and news. You can stream live TV from any device. Watch the most Colorado sports for the lowest price. You can start watching immediately with a free trial. The best part is there's no contract, no cable, no hassle. Just sign up and start watching. In fact, you can sign up on your smart device. You just click on the Fubo thing and then you're like, yeah, I want this. And then it's right there. There's no setup. There's no box. There's no anything else. It's great. You got college football. You got NFL, U.S. Open, Ryder Cup. You got all those types of things. So watch all your favorite college football and NFL with Fubo. Go to www.fubotv.com slash DNVR and sign up to get 15% off your first month. That's when you use that slash DNVR. So fubotv.com slash DNVR. Also want to tell you guys about BetterHelp. Let me get to the BetterHelp read here. Um, this episode of DMVR Nuggets is brought to you by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life we face some tough choices or perhaps we're at a crossroads in our path and we need some advice about what we're supposed to do. Maybe that's a crossroads in a relationship, in a career, 
Uh, maybe it's a relationship to somebody else in your family, not necessarily your spouse, parenting, whatever it is you're dealing with, BetterHelp is here to help you along with those. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash DNVR today to get 10% off of your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash DNVR. What I love about it, there's a lot of privacy and confidentiality. It's safe, it's secure, it's anonymous. And then if you get paired with somebody that you're not really vibing with, no problem. They're not going to charge you. They'll get you into another therapist to talk to. And uh, you can keep doing that so you find the one. Oftentimes with therapy, it's about finding the right person. BetterHelp is here to help you. BetterHelp.com slash DNVR for 10% off your first month. All right. Miroslav, what did you make of your uh, uh, of former Nugget, current Partisan? What is Partisan called? Do they have a nickname? Uh, uh, Grobari, that's the name of the of the fans. And Grobari? It, it, yeah, it literally means grave diggers. <laughs> like, grave diggers. It, it's, it's because, you know, the, the colors are black right. and yeah. stuff like that. And uh, that's like, it's something that goes on for like last 40 years or something right. like that. So what do you think of PJ? PJ is, is just awesome. I, you know how easy he was to root for while he was a nugget. And we all got, you know, sad when they needed to trade him away to to get some other guys that were healthy yeah. at that moment to, to be on the team. But he's definitely one of the guys I would love to see back on the nuggets in the in the future. It would be incredible. And like you said, I mean, that did work out for Dante Exum, who kind of had um, a more high profile PJ Dozier career, you know, like Dante Exum was at one point in time, just more hyped, had some injuries, just couldn't stay healthy, went to Europe, and now he's back with Dallas. And like, honestly, I root for, I root for him, you know, I'm, I'm rooting for, uh, for Dante Exum. So it would be cool to see that same path work out for PJ. I think I've seen uh, on several places uh, comments like there's no way Dante Exum is coming back to the NBA. He's had such a disappointing stint in the NBA. And you, lo and behold, a year later, he's back. Yeah. He's back uh, on Dallas. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy for him. I know. It is so great. And preparing for this interview, just going back and trying to remember all of the, like, P.J. Dozier moments, you know, his arrival. This Like, I'm watching highlights of the games from those first few ones. Um, he really did have an interesting one, and it's funny to think about. I didn't remember that he was the reason Austin Rivers got picked up because he got hurt. I didn't remember that. And then when I went back and looked at the stats, that 11-game stretch where Murray's out and he's basically playing starters minutes or, or 20, 24 minutes a game, his numbers were great, and Nuggets were killing everybody. They weren't just winning. They were winning, like, good games. And it was kind of fun to go back and remember that. Yeah, it, it was really sad. I mean, we, we've lost Jamal. And, but said, okay, this team has a lot of grit on them, and you know they they can they have you know enough pieces to be really competitive. And then we lost PJ, and I was like, so he who is now you know guarding the perimeter, the team was really depleted on 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 that part. So yeah, G good for Austin Rivers. I mean, I'm glad he kind of revived his NBA career on the Nuggets too. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool, man. Um, anything else? Any follow-ups you have, or anything you're kind of? When does Partisan season begin? Oh, it's it's beginning pretty pretty soon. I think it, in like two weeks we'll we'll be having our our first games, you know, at the Asiatic League, and then soon after that, Euroleague will start as well. And I don't know if you know this, but teams that play Euroleague and let's say Asiatic League in parallel. They they will play like seventy regular season games. It's 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 not that far away from from yeah. what the NBA teams are doing, and the, you know the 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 schedule is equally condensed. So it's it's not uh, it's not like uh, some kind of a you know amateur level uh, basketball comparing to to the NBA. The, the the effort is pretty close to the NBA. Not many people get to play with Jokic and Obradovic. I just I feel like PJ Dozier is going to be a top four smartest player on earth <laughs> coming out of this season. You you know you know of guys like Djordjevic and Dandilovic who yeah. who used to play for Željko Obradović and of course by extension the national team Divac and Stojak yeah. and Stojakovic and whoever. But the more recent guys like Bojan Bogdanović, Bogdan Bogdanović, you know, he's he's trained some really great great uh, yeah. players under him even recently. So. Yeah, yeah. There, there's no reason for PJ not to make a, a pretty significant jump in his career.
this upcoming yeah. season. I'm excited for it, man. And such an easy dude to root for. So, all right, we have some Nuggets topics. We're going to – it's Friday. You guys, we're going to have a little bit of a full casual Friday for the rest of the show here. Um, we're going to talk about some overrated players and teams from this year. And then I got a couple games for us to get us out into the weekend uh, that we can do here in a little bit later. But Miroslav, let's start with – I thought it would be fun for us each to come up with. And we'll go one and one. You'll give one, I'll give one. We'll kind of go back and forth. Um, players who we just think are overrated. It's Friday. No, you know, nobody's paying attention. We can go ahead and fire off some hot takes here. Why don't you get us started? Give me a player that's overrated. Yeah, well, uh, let's start with all the former Lakers except for Alex, Alex Caruso <laughs> and Josh Hart. I mean, what is going on with Austin Rivers? I mean, it's so nice. Austin you know, Reeves. they finally... Uh, sorry, Austin Reeves. So they finally got, you know like a um, white American guy on the Lakers who is supposed to be the face of the franchise after LeBron retires, I guess. No I way, mean, man. <laughs> <laughs> he is such a liability on defense. I mean, <laughs> what are we talking about? Why? Wh I mean, that hype does not help him at all. I don't know what, what what's going on there. So so I'm I actually feel kind of sad for the guy because he might leave the Lakers and become a really cool guy. To all of us, but <laughs> but for now, when he's on the evil empire, it's it's just like, come on, guys, stop it! It's it's just it's tacky. So here's the thing about Austin Reeves, th and this is where, in contrast to us, Miroslav, perpetually right about everything, of course. especially all things basketball, is that we did the underrated thing with Jokic, right? Back in 2016 or 15, we're talking about, hey, this guy is underrated, and. That never ended. It turned out he's the best player in the world, and we just got to ride that all the way to the top. Lakers fans were right about Austin Reeves being underrated, but that elevator only went like two stories up, and then he became overrated, and now it's like that's where he's at. He's a really good player, but that's all he is. Yeah, he is a, he is a really cute role player that you could put out and, and have some instant offense off your bench, probably. But if you're heavily relying on him, you know, for 40 minutes in the playoff, your your defense is not going to look really good, even if with with Anthony Davis behind him. So it's it's I don't know. I mean, last last season, we talked about a bunch of teams in the NBA being really flawed. Yeah. And that doesn't mean they were worse than the teams usually are. It's just that the Nuggets were by far the best team. Yeah. as shown in the playoffs so it's easy for us from this perspective to 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 talk about all of these guys huh? he's a he's a pretty good guy he's a good player he might have a place on the nuggets roster as well you know but i don't want my defense to be to be relying on him too heavily so yeah, yeah i i th that's the biggest reason i mean he's a really prolific scorer and he's a really really good foul baiter and that's really important for today's nba so I guess, you know, he, he should have got a bigger deal than what he got from the Lakers, and that was a bit fishy to me. I think, um, all right, he's overrated, and I do think there's something, too. Like, in a playoff series, the Nuggets are just so good on offense that if you have a mark, like, Denver's going to score 120-plus per 100 possessions. So that's why a player like him, as good as he is, I just am like, oh, if, I'm not worried about him. <laughs> like, I'm not worried about Austin Reeves. That's fine. Um, but we got to keep it moving. I'll have to give you one now. Now, some people, I see how people say like Trey Young or this, that. I feel like that's too common. That's too common. I had to get creative. There's some guys that I think have become known. I'm going to give you, and this one's a little crazy. I'm wild in a little. Brooke Lopez. I think Brooke Lopez has become massively overrated in part. He's a very good defender, very good defensive player. He's pretty old, first of all, and like he's he's over the port of his peak. But also, what would Jokic look like defensively next to Giannis? And also, <laughs> if his only job was playing defense and shooting threes, like what would he look like? I argue that he would look like Brooke Lopez or better if that was all he was focused on and he played next to Giannis. I actually agree with this take because I don't think he would be considered a much better defender without Yanis than, let's say, Yusuf Nurkic. He's also, you oh, know, man, uh, I don't know about that. I mean, <laughs> I he's also <laughs> he is play, also playing under the block, you know, yeah, on the pick and roll. I mean, 
I don't know. I mean, he is good. He is long. He has long arms. He blocks the shit out of the ball. But but as as you said, if you have Yanis next to you, you will probably look good on defense. So I, I, I'm guessing Yanis is is making up a, a lot of uh, stuff that Brook cannot get to because he's always, you know, under the block. But but yeah. My argument is just that when your job as a rim protector is just to protect the rim, like it, his job is very simple, I would say. You know, he has to be this great drop defensive player and he's got to yeah. stretch the court and hit threes. And it takes the talent to do it. Not everybody can. But, you know, a player like Jokic, and this is where I guess all of my takes always come back to how they're compared to Jokic. You'd ask the average person, they'd be like, Brook Lopez, amazing defender, one of the most impactful defensive players in the NBA. Jokic, terrible defender, blah, 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 blah. I think they have the same skill set. One of them just also has to do every other thing. So in the regular season, it's like, hey, I'm not there. Playoffs, same guy. They're the same guy. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, some five years ago, I was I was even proposing Brook Lopez to 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 join the Nuggets and play I mean, next to great. Nikola Jokic. Oh, next to him. <laughs> next to Nikola Jokic. That was the crazy part. That was the yeah. crazy part. He was a, he would be a perfect, you know, backup center. But if he would be playing next to Nikola Jokic, I thought he could, you know, uh, help with the defense and, and all that. I don't think that would work. The, the two of them would would be too slow for that, I guess, for the uh, advanced adva- uh, defensive schemes. I, it would be great if uh, Jokic is like age 33 through 37 season he's just the defense and three guy and all of a sudden he's all nba defensive player or something like this at 34 (laughs) years old because that's all he's doing i think he has it in him uh we're gonna get to some more hot takes we got to catch up we went long with pj dozier so we had to go short in the second segment but i want to tell you guys about nutrafol you don't have to choose between better hair growth and your health nutrafol provides a whole body health approach for men that promotes healthier hair No drugs, no compromises, just better hair. Men think losing their hair is inevitable. Take control of your hair's future with Nutrafol's science-backed hair growth supplement for for men. You guys want to check this out? Eric has already given a personal testimony for it. By the way, this way we're really going to sell this is come opening day of the season or maybe Christmas, maybe Yokemas. Eric takes the hat off and reveals an incredibly full and thick body of hair. That's really what's going to take this to the next level. But you can take the first step to visibly thicker hair, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code DNBR. You can find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com slash men spelled, I just spelled it out for you. Use promo code DNBR, you get 10% off. Let's do do also, you think that this, the, sorry, this beautiful thing on my head is all natural? No, it's, it's with the help of, of Nutrifol. So, <laughs> Look yeah, at that beautiful head me. of hair. Oh, my gosh. So gorgeous. The, the owl. Uh, at, also, I want to tell you guys about Bet365. They don't do ordinary. They believe that every sport should be epic. See for yourself. Whenever you sign up today, you'll get $365 in bonus bets whenever you bet just $1. That's an insane deal, you guys. I hear all these deals from the different books. This is by far the best one. You bet $1. That's it. $1, and you get $365. Bet $365. You get $365. In bonus bets, just instantly. Download the app, deposit $10, and claim your $365 in bonus bets as soon as you place a bet of $1. Download it. It's Bet365 app. Use p- promo code DNBR365 whenever you sign up. Whatever your sport is, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 21 or older and physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, let's get back. You got, you're got up now. Give me an overrated player. Well, I, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to... Um, uh, I'm going to talk about the Warriors too much today. <laughs> really? Yeah, they don't scare I, you? No, I mean it's just a bunch of thirty-five years old year olds that are you know promising a forty-year-old Chris Paul to bring him his first championship. Yeah. Um, I mean, if there's one one warrior, I think it's overrated at this point. It's it's Clay Thompson. It's just I had that, him on my list. Can you believe we both picked Clay Thompson on this? This is wild. I thought I was being crazy. I mean. He has like a forty million dollar 
contract for this season and he's a free agent after that and i don't think they will they will like uh, not sign him to the extension because he's their guy and i think he deserves to to stay with the with the warriors but i think that's good news for the rest of the league because you know since all of those horrific injuries he suffered he's just not the defensive guy he used to be and he is kind of super streaky with yeah. his three pointer uh, for the last couple of seasons so i don't know i mean it's it's not going to be easy to build around a 40 million dollar guy if he's that inconsistent as he is right now i think he is like michael porter if michael porter took crazier shots <laughs> like we always compared porter to clay thompson as this like great thing but sometimes, especially this year when he wasn't making them as much as he has in years past, and you watch him and you go, that's a horrible shot. Not just because it was like off balance or this or that, but also because he read the court horribly. And I think that they sometimes like when you're surrounded by smart players, you get the smart label, you know, but he I think is a little bit. It's not that he's not smart. He's just a little bit more uh, fast and loose than I think most people would think. Yeah, people tend to play stupidly with it. They don't have enough oxygen in their minds. I think he's just out of breath too often comparing to what he was before. And I, I would like to, 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 to give him some slack and say, okay, he's not in the shape he used to be back in the day. And that's maybe why he's taking some, some really dumb, uh, dumb possessions. How about Lowry Markkinen? Now, now here's another one. He's really good. I really like him. I did a podcast today with David Locke and Danny LaRue. I actually recorded a few days ago, but it dropped today. And in there, I was surprised to hear both panelists think that Lowry Markkinen's year last year was halfway up the ladder of where he's going. I think last year is where he's going. I think he is now within 5% of the player he's going to be. But they seem to think that that was just the halfway point to, to the rise. And for that, so when I heard that, I go, okay, I like Larry Markkinen. The gap between 24 points per game and 30 points per game is just so steep. You have to have all, you have to have pick and roll. You have to have ISO. You have to have post up. You have to do a lot of things to get up that high. So in that, I think he might be overrated. I think he's a really good third player. He might be good enough to be your second player if everything's right and every other piece is good. But I don't think he's above that. And it sounds like people have him in that category. Yeah, it's probably because he had a pretty bad NBA career before last season, and yeah. he obviously wasn't in a in a great situation uh, back there. But yeah, I I kind of agree with you. I mean, isn't like twenty four points per game enough? Like, let's not it's get crazy. That's that's a lot of points, and he was very efficient. By the way, he was really really good. Uh, for Utah Jazz, and I don't know, they they brought some some new guys in, like John Collins. I don't know what will be the 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 ball distribution, the shot distribution on the Utah Jazz next season. I don't think they're they're gonna be like a top six team uh, in the Western Conference by any means. No so way, man. I think what, Utah what might does, be bad. But what does that tell you about Laurie? If he's their best player, and they you know are probably like tenth best team in the West. So what are we talking about? Is it like, like I don't know, like Eric Bledsoe back in the day? Nah, he's better I might than be that. Harsh. <laughs> he's way <here. laughs> now. You overcorrected from where I was. <laughs> he's a really good player. I see some. Uh, yeah, he's a really good player. All right, give me another one. Let's do one more. So pick a really good player. Yeah. Okay. So this is gonna be tough. Oh no! Oh no! <clears throat> I'm gonna say. Rudy Gobert. <laughs> I think we got this is crazy. No, 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 no. Let me explain. So I think we kind of went crazy with the cat hate. It's not the hate. It's just ridiculing cat for, for being cat and saying that the only move Minnesota should make is trade away cat and get something, you know, uh, get something back so the Minnesota can actually be good next season or season beyond that. And it's just like, you're still stuck with Rudy Gobert as your, you know, $50 million piece. Well, you, like, you can't trade Gobert, though. That's part of it, right? I mean, it, it would be embarrassing. 
I think that's the only reason. <laughs> you think you, you gave away all of those contracts? Picks. I mean, you you gave away all those picks, and now you're getting embarrassed by getting like some I don't know five second round picks and then some salary fillers. I don't know. I mean, I think he's overrated, but at the same time, as you said, his contract is super difficult to to trade. So I don't know, man. I I just if they can make it work somehow yeah with with like four guys four big guys earning 20 plus million dollars like yeah all the power to them but it's i i don't see it um if i were to give you one more i've said this one on the show before so it's not that crazy but i think jalen brunson is overrated he's a really good player but I think he had the perfect year last year where he went to a team that desperately needed him, was ready for hype. He w- had an incredible impact. But I do feel like he's one of these guys that kind of has a ceiling about, you know, that the, the final form of Jalen Brunson. Like, how do you win a title with him? What is the role on the team and what are the players around him? I think that's kind of a tough thing. I think he's a tough player to have on your team for to be a champion. Yeah, the thing about him is he now has this FIBA World Cup stench on him. And that's it's pretty similar to what Dame Lillard had happened to him last time he was playing for the Team US. They're just small guys, and in FIBA ball, the 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 paint is so condensed, and there's a lot of big bodies around you. So the the little guys, uh, it's not easy for them in FIBA ball. So it it looked worse. I was like when I saw the 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 Team USA, I was like, I I hope you're not planning on starting starting Brunson. You, you obviously have the guy from Indiana who is way better uh, fitted for, for the FIBA basketball, but they still had to do the packing order they they imagined before the World Cup. So yeah. that's why you had all those minutes for... Uh, um, oh, what's the guy from, from New Orleans? Ingram. Ingram. Ingram got just too many minutes at the beginning of the, of the tournament, yeah. and then, you know, by the end of it, he, he just Didn't lost play. his spot yeah then he got COVID apparently but yeah Uh, let me ask you this because i haven't talked to you about it what do you think of my prophecy did you you oh the the two two championships and then the 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 olympic gold the olympic gold over team usa yeah yeah over the dream team or redream team whatever we're going to call it we're in the last dance team whatever it is that this is going to get labeled you know what i'm a hothead you know that you're a really good analyst, but you're a homer. But I've heard <laughs> so many smart people in the last couple of days on various national podcasts saying that Serbia with Jokic beating the best possible U.S. team oh, man. Is, no, is not completely out of the question. Come on, guys. What are all these people stealing our take for, Miroslav? <laughs> I just heard KOC say, say that, like today. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. jeez. <laughs> he sorry. stole the take for he definitely stole the take koc i know you stole the take <laughs> <laughs> that's my guy i love koc yeah of uh so you think it's uh it's almost too popular now we should start talking about how they have no chance so that they can go back to being underdogs yeah yeah that's right like like we have no no chance of assembling a good team there's so many we can make up like fights within the team like these guys don't want to play with each other or something like that uh-huh. so people would put them under the radar again. All right, Miroslav, you have turned um, this off season of Serbian Corner. You've really come up with the idea to make game shows happen. You know, you got some cool ways of of bringing on new guests and having them make a fool of themselves. Um, so, I'm gonna have to have you lighten up because I have a fun couple of games for you uh, coming up in the last segment. Or if you're ready for it, of course, I'm born ready. It's Friday. We might as well get out of here with a couple laughs. Uh, First, want to just remind everybody, become a diehard. Football season is here. We have some great football content behind our paywall. We've got some great buffs content. Uh, And then Nuggets and Avs starting up here very, very quickly. We have some cool things going on with both beats. Our Avs are actually out at their version of Summer League right now in Las Vegas. Uh, If you want to support us, though, honestly, it's the best way you could support DNVR. If you like what DNVR brings to the sports universe, For Colorado sports teams, support us by becoming a diehard. You get discounts at the merch store. You get discounts at the bar. You get access to the Discord. You get access to all of the content, not just most of it, but all of it. And more than anything, it's just a way of saying thank you and uh, supporting everything we do. So 
If you're considering it, you've been on the fence for a while, become a diehard. We really appreciate it. All right. Miroslav, have you ever played Wavelength? Have you ever played this game? No. Perfect. So here's how it's going to work. You know the number rating skit system. If I told you from 1 to 10, 10 is best, 1 is worst, right? You could easily think of this. So I want you, without telling me, just to think of a number between 1 and 10. It could be any number. Do you have it? Yeah, I have it. Okay, don't tell anyone. Just hold on to that number. In the chat, you could play along. I'm going to give you now a series of prompts, Miroslav, and you're going to give me an example of something that would rate whatever number it is you're thinking of. So, for example... If I told you, oh, a, shit. So if I told you a movie, whatever number you're thinking of, give me a movie that you would rate the number you're thinking of. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, okay. I am going to make this card for you. Well, it's going to be a movie people have heard of. No, no it's, it's going to be a movie you haven't watched. Okay. Okay. So fine. Whatever. <laughs> it's it's going to be Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2. Yeah, you're right. I don't. That doesn't give me anything. Thanks. <laughs> Crap. I'm totally lost. We're in this together, Miroslav. We're trying to meet in the middle. All right. Okay. Um, that. Oh, so help. I'm not fighting you. We're we're working together. Okay. We're working. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm going to learn a lot about Iron Man 2 through this exercise. Um, <laughs> give me a Denver Nuggets jersey, like any of the jerseys that they've worn in their history. What jersey would correspond to this number most perfectly? Well, this is difficult because I have a completely different idea of what <laughs> this the, is why the jersey crazy. should look like. So you know what's my favorite Nuggets jersey of all time? It's like the, the whites with short sleeves. I okay. love those. That's your favorite I would, one? Wow. I, I would never play in those because it's too difficult, I think. Yeah. But I, I really like those because it was Mitchell. like the first time I've seen something like that. Is Iron Man NBA. 2 good or bad? Oh, it's a good bad movie. It's a good bad movie, okay. Mitchell tells me it's a good bad movie. All right, what jerseys are you giving me? Are you giving me those white jerseys then, or are you have some different no, ones? No, are, those are a 10 for me, so this is oh. not the number. Oh, shit, I shouldn't have said that. So, right. so it's, not, it's not a 10. So uh, let's... Okay, let's go with the with the the red. What what was it oh, called? Oh, the, the red the... skyline. Oh man, we're in like two rage here, Miroslav. This is like a two yeah, three it's... situation. All right, hold on, hold okay. on. Give me a food, a food that you would rate this this number. Okay, okay. So this is specially for you, not the the white <laughs> audience, because they haven't tried a lot of Serbian food. Any you know, food, it could be American food, yeah. it could be anything. Yeah. Something that's common, though, you know, common. Yeah, okay. So it's gonna be a pizza. A pizza? Pizza's yeah. fan ma'am, Serbian pizza must be terrible because pizza's like a <laughs> nine. <laughs> Miroslav's the hardest person ever to play this game with. All right, do you the real this is the last okay. question I have for you. Oh, go ahead. Well, go no, ahead. I have to explain this about pizza. If you talk to Italians who actually invented pizza, they will tell you that pizza is not something special. It's a it's a dish that was made many centuries ago for the poor people because everything you can put on pizza can be super cheap. M Miroslav's the so worst person the to play this game with. <laughs> Just the worst person. <laughs> All right. Here's here's where I'm going to get you and nail down the number. I have a feeling you're in the like four, three range, somewhere around there. But I'm going to say, give me a Jokic stat line. A Jokic stat line for a game that you would say, Jokic, it was this caliber Jokic game. Okay, okay, that's fair. That's fair. Like that's points, rebounds, uh, assists. Yeah, like thirty-two, twelve, and eight. Oh, that's a great game, Miroslav. <laughs> All right, you made this by your standard. Oh, come oh, no, on, man. Come on. I don't know. <laughs> thirty-two, twelve, and eight. That's an incredible game. It's, yeah, it's 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 not like a like a fifty-point triple double. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go with – I'm that line got me all the way up to five. Is your number five? No. You can reveal your number now. My number is seven. My God, that was impossible. <laughs> this was impossible. <laughs> We're not going to match up once, Miroslav. <laughs> Let's try again. All right, all right. Think of a new number now, Miroslav. Think of a new number, will you? 
Yeah, the, the problem is that my first number was a pretty difficult one to, you know. Uh, <laughs> it was not that difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your movie tastes are just really rough. All right, think of a okay. number. Think of a number. Okay, you I got have it. it? Yeah. All right. Give me a player from a Nuggets player from the Jokic era. Aaron Gordon. Whew, we're looking at like an eight or a nine. This is an eight or a nine. So this is like one of the best players of the Jokic era. Extremely loved. We're in eight or nine territory here, I think. Um, give me an NBA basketball team this year. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is difficult because I'm super low on most of most teams so um okay let's i guess let's go with phoenix suns oh man we're definitely eight or nine then i mean we know nuggets would have been 10 that's it's not a 10 it's phoenix he's a little lower on them than most that's got to be in an eight area all right give me an animal a type of animal oh okay okay so uh everybody in the chat is saying nine they're more on the nine i think i might be with them Let's okay, so what an, kind of animal? An albatross. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, not only am I never playing this game with Miroslav, I'm never playing any game with Miroslav ever again. An albatross? Yeah. I don't even know who this is for. It's an interesting bird. It's not one anybody ever thinks about. Oh, I'll explain gosh. later. I'll explain okay, later. Okay, oh, really? Will you? Um, <laughs> give Give me a type of basketball play. So you know. Slam dunk, a deep three, uh, some you know, a play, a turnover. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is gonna be, this is gonna be Jeff Green's Statue of Liberty dunk. Man, that's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. All right, I'm with the ch chat. What are we thinking? I think it's got. I think he was doing the bird thing to try to appease me. I think he was trying to play to the audience here. Albatross, not exactly a cool bird. But he doesn't know that. I'm gonna go eight. Is it eight? <laughs> no, it's not eight. It's nine, Adam. It's oh, nine. <laughs> Come on. It, Come it was on. so easy, dog. Adam. So so listen, albatross is the second biggest bird in the world after condor. That's. I think you're thinking of like flight bird because you got the emo, you've got the the ostrich, definitely bigger. So you got to be a little confused. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't okay. bring your bird flying, knowledge at me. Don't you bird. bring okay. it here. Okay, flying birds. Sorry, flying birds. <laughs> no, should, should, we tr should we try one more? Ever. Let's try one more. It's kind of a fun game. I okay. like how the chat plays along here. Um, give me an NBA code. Or think of a number. Think of a number. One through ten. Okay. You got it? Um, I got it. All right. Give me an NBA coach. Woo. Um, oh, Jesus. Okay, so not that guy, because that guy is one. Um, <laughs> He's so bad at this game. <laughs> okay, it's let's two or three just based on his thinking out loud. <laughs> I'm trying to help you, man. Yeah, so, thank you. okay, so um, let's go with with um, Chauncey Billups. Oh, man, how are you doing this to me? I love Chauncey, but he might not be a great coach. So, <laughs> but it's also you want like me to go with situation. Brian Shaw? Hey, you can't. All right, he's definitely in. It's going to be two. <laughs> Give me a country in Europe. Oh, this oh, is going to make some enemies. Man. This is oh, going to make man. some enemies for Why, man? Love. Come on. Come on, Come dude. On, Give man. me a country. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm so glad I picked this. No, I, I'm Dad I'm working. so sorry, Krasi, if you're watching, but Bulgaria. Oh, he's going Bulgaria. That is so messed up. Um, sorry, Krasi. <laughs> Love you, guy. Give me a, a day of the year, like a date on the calendar. Oh, date on the calendar. Okay, okay. So let's do... Let's do January 8th. January 8th. Okay. That's not so that's, the worst. So, that's, that so could that's, have been worse. I, I have to explain. Serbian Christmas. No. Is that Serbian Christmas? Yeah, there it, you go. It's the day after Serbian Christmas. Oh, the day after Serbian Christmas. So you, okay. you have to start working again. Okay. That's like a two. He's definitely in a two, three range. All right. Here's the, there's the last one. 
an outcome for the Nuggets this season? Ooh. Um, second round exit. Second round exit, man. That's definitely yeah, higher like, than I thought. Then that's higher because that's. I mean, that's I bad. Mean, that's negative. Come on, Marisol. That's, that's negative, that's but like, it's not. That's too. like 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 Philly Philly level. Come on. That is like Philly level. All right, I'm going three. Is it three? It's two. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted Marisol. to go with Luke Walton, but that would be an obvious one, so I I yeah. didn't. Yeah, and then, man, yeah. I can't believe we get did this three times, four questions each time, and didn't get it at all. Unbelievable, yeah. Miros. Yeah, you're pretty bad at this game. Sorry, <laughs> you're man. pretty bad at this game. <laughs> pizza? Pizza is a ten. That's like most people. If you ask uh, their favorite food, they say pizza. It's like my number one food. Yeah, those yeah those food they those people didn't taste a lot of good food in their lives then. I guess. Uh, all right, now uh, Tiff, you could bring up the board now. Last thing I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you rank. Five things. Now you you don't know where that which one comes next. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a, an outcome, and you have to rank it from one the best to five the worst. Okay, so I'm gonna oh. give you an outlet or uh, options here. PJ Dozier leads Partizan to a Euro League championship this year. One. <laughs> There's nothing better than that. Oh. Oh, you mean uh -huh, I have to to okay? Yeah, let me yeah, hear yeah. the others. You, you just, okay. no, you, no, yeah, you don't get to hear the others. You just have to. I don't get to, to guess. Hear. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, uh, and this all happens next summer, right? It all happens this year. So whatever this season is coming this up. This season, yeah. yeah. By by the end of this season, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, it's a two. A two. He's going to save that one spot just in case. All right. The Nuggets add Jovic and Bogdan Bogdanovic. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I'm going to put it at four. Okay. That one's four. All right. So PJ, or so Nuggets adding Jovic and Bogdan. That's a four. PJ leading the Partizan to EuroLeague Championship is number two. A Nuggets three-peat. They've got one. They win two more. <laughs> oh, man. What's your green, what are they doing to me? I mean, I, I, I mean, you might just give me bull crap after this one, and I sound really stupid. Um... You I'm gonna to stick with. I'm, I'm gonna stick with three. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have something better for me. Uh, you probably know where I'm already going. Uh, Serbia winning the next two Euro baskets. Damn not just the not just the next one, the next two. <laughs> okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, five. That, that, you're giving that one five. <laughs> give me, give me the main one. Come on. Serbia beats Team USA in the 2024 Olympics. <laughs> now, can, can you can you give me more details four about four, this four team? Gold. I'll give you. Yeah, that's the gold. So you, that that's the last it's, one. It has to it's, be one. It's, it's LeBron there. LeBron's there. It's the 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 last dance team. <sighs> yeah, that's that's a clear one, man. That's a clear one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have the board for what he picked here, Tiff? Should, should put it together. And I, I was wondering this if, um, because I, I asked this of some other people, but just Jokic winning, if he does come back and they beat the U.S. for a gold medal in the Olympics, a full, and I'm not trying to take anything away from any previous Serbian team, but the times U.S. has lost, usually it's with some kind of mixed or hybrid team or whatever. It's never been a dream, a quote unquote dream team. To do that in the Olympics, in a year when the U.S. is like rallying behind, we have to show them. To me, I just feel like that would be, in my mind, I'm not Serbian. I can't speak for you. I feel like that'd be worth like five medals. <laughs> do you feel the same way? No, no, definitely. Listen, you know that equally good as I do. The only Yugoslav gold medal was in 1980 with no U.S. team out there. So it was a great accomplishment, but come on. It was... Yeah like one of the tournaments where the US didn't have the best teams. So yeah, I absolutely agree that's that's a really 
that would be a really huge thing like like when Argentina won in back in 2004 that was a huge deal and that American team wasn't bad at all the Argentina was just better so so yeah it, it would be probably even more uh, impressive even though I think like like LeBron led team I mean what do you expect from 40 year old LeBron is it <laughs> like on. like no 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 I'm I'm serious do you think he would be significantly better than 32 year old Larry Bird in 92 yes okay I mean LeBron was great in this playoffs Miroslav I mean he was really good yeah, I he know he was. I mean, he was really was good better, in, but... in NBA basketball. Oh my God, <laughs> Miroslav, how? You know, it's a go different back to Miroslav game. on the Come screen on. here, Tev. We don't. We, we, we're going to get out of here now. Here's the. Th it is a different game. I'm with you. It's just you're doing the Austin Reeves thing now, too. You're going too far. You're going too far on this. LeBron's a great player. You're right, though. There is a little bit of difference. But to think of like Larry Bird could barely move. He couldn't even practice in '92. Yeah, that's fair. He was retired for a year before before the the those Olympics. So that's that's a fair point. But I want to say I I don't think the best possible American team should have LeBron as their leader. Oh, I love I this. Think, I love this. I think they have better player in a better shape to take them to gold than than LeBron James. It might literally be LeBron's swan song though. You know, this might be, and he maybe he doesn't know if he can get Bronny in the NBA, so he has Bronny on Team USA in the late in her role. I don't know, but maybe this is the LeBron's last, literal last dance, and he just goes out uh, that way. It's possible. I, I don't he think it all I, it. I don't think he would be ready to take a back seat appropriately. You know, to to some other guys, I think he would try to be a hero in mm. the clutch, and that he could fail miserably. Oh, he man. wasn't so good in clutch recently. Yeah. All right. Well, there we did overrated. We did spicy takes, and then Miroslav waited till the very last second to give the spiciest take. LeBron is actually going to weigh down Team USA. What a spicy take, man! Ten out of ten. Five peppers. Miroslav, you brought the heat. Uh, you're probably just trying to show off for your boy PJ Dozier since he was on of today. Course. <laughs> of course. I, I just want people to remember tomorrow at two p.m. Denver time, we'll have another Serbian corner with another. Uh, a game show that will be much better than this one today. But this one was pretty good <laughs> as well, I have to say. It was really good. It, it was pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Miroslav, thanks as always, buddy. Everybody else, thanks for a full week of watching us. D-Line is back next week. I can't wait for a vote. Probably back next week. I don't know. We'll find out together. Uh, hit that like button for me on the way out. We'll see everybody next time.